good evening everyone i welcome all the participant participants in today's webinar as you know our today's topic is jurisdiction of civil courts uh, all the topic is very small but it's very important one for all the practic practicing lawyers because uh, in case we want to file we want to file a suit we must be aware about the subject matter of the suit the pecuniary as well as territorial jurisdiction which will be involved in that matter before filing a civil suit if we are not diligent and vigilant at the time of filing of suit about jurisdiction point in that case in future it might be possible that we have to contest the matter uh, up to appellate courts and uh, lost the battle over there on the point of jurisdiction section 6 of cpc of cpc which deals with pecuniary jurisdiction pecuniary jurisdiction as we know is the uh, valuation of suit and uh, it depends uh, from state to state but pecuniary jurisdiction has been given to one court like in delhi there are three tiers wherein jur uh, pecuniary jurisdiction has been divided in civil courts it is up to rupees 3 lakhs if valuation in a suit uh, is up to rupees 3 lakhs in that case it will be filed in before the civil court if valuation is from 3 lakh above 3 lakhs to two, up to rupees 2 crores in that case it will be filed before district court and if valuation exceeds from rupees 2 crores then it will go directly to high court in original jurisdiction while in some states the lowest court grade have the jurisdiction without any limit like in delhi so part 1 of cpc deals with jurisdiction all the sections covered are from 13 to 21 section 9 of cpc is also as important as section 15 to 21 section 9 of cpc says that courts to try all civil suits unless barred expressly or impliedly expressly means that if a statute prohibits filing of a case before civil court in that case civil court will not deal with that matter even if it is filed like revenue courts or land acquisition matters which are prohibited even by a, a mentioned in the cpc itself in companies at 1956 there was no bar to civil court jurisdiction while in companies at 2013 it is specifically mentioned that civil courts will not have any jurisdiction or the civil court jurisdiction of civil courts will be barred or with the matters which are related to companies matters this is the uh, express bar while implied bar is when statute has created some special courts like family courts so if a matter is related with the matrimonial disputes it will go to family court like labor court and mscd courts as well there is one matter is dhulabai versus state of mp this is air 1969 supreme court 78 when matter is related with the sales tax the state of mp imposed sales tax on the traders this notification was challenged later on by the traders and this notification was declared void and illegal by the uh, high court of mp thereafter dhulabai filed case before civil court claiming refund of tax which was paid earlier before uh, declaration of uh, declaration by the high court the contention raised by state that civil court has no jurisdiction as matter pertains to tax liability but trial court decided in favor of plaintiff <clears throat> the matter reached to the high court and high court uh, reversed the judgment of trial court by holding that as matter is not specifically of civil court and it is barred then matter reached to the supreme court where my honorable supreme court held 
uh, while uh, there were seven observations which were made by the honorable supreme court that where statute gives finality to the orders of these special tribunals civil court jurisdiction must be held to be excluded if there is adequate remedy to do what the civil court would normally do second was when where there is an express bar of jurisdiction of court adequacy or the sufficiency of remedies which were provided that may be relevant when challenge to the provision of the particular particular act has been declared ultra virus it cannot be brought before tribunals constituted under the under the act when a provision is already declared unconstitutional a suit will always lie where a particular act contains no machinery for refund of tax collected in excess of constitutional limits or illegally collected a suit will lie so it was held that dullabai is entitled and suit is very well maintainable uh, for claim of refund of uh, the sales tax which was paid by them as there was no remedy provided under the sales tax act in state of india now next up section 15 suits to be instituted at lowest grade although this is a uh, section this section is a rule of procedure and not of jurisdiction and it does not therefore oust the jurisdiction of higher courts suppose a matter is filed uh, before the district court wherein its jurisdiction is uh, much more than what civil court had and it it can either decide the suit or can return the claim to the court which has the pecuniary jurisdiction to the lowest grade so there will be no uh, failure of justice so valuation in suit determines the jurisdiction what we are stating in written statement is irrelevant then comes section 16 which says suits to be instituted where subject matter is situated this section has six clauses first one is recover where recovery of immovable property is included then if uh, suit is related with partition of immovable property or foreclosure or uh, when there is some right is to be determined or some interest to be claimed by the lender or compensation to be asked and recovery of movable property so where subject matter is situated suit shall be filed over there and there is a one case harshad chimalal modi versus dlf universal limited this is air 2005 supreme court triple four six harshad chimalal modi booked up uh, booked a flat with the defendant dlf universal limited the payment the agreement was signed at delhi payments were made at delhi the office of the defendant was at delhi and the flat which was booked it was at gurgaon so while suit was filed by him the relief claimed by him was for specific performance and as well as declaration and possession of flat the trial the matter was earlier filed before high court wherein the defendant admitted to admitted the jurisdiction of delhi court thereafter when uh, jurisdiction the pecuniary limits were enhanced the matter was sent back to the trial court and before trial court the defendant moved an application on, under order 617 by amend and amended their claim by saying that this court has no jurisdiction as the suit property is situated at some different place which is at gurgaon and this state is different from delhi the trial court decided this issue in favor of the defendant and suit was dismissed there after the plaintiff approved delhi high court again delhi high court confirmed the judgment given by trial court and then matter is to the supreme court so the supreme court held the matter squarely falls under section 16 as the matter is related to the 
immovable property and where the immovable property is situated matter will go at that place it relevant of the fact that agreement was signed at delhi payments were made at delhi and registered office of the defendant is at delhi the relief claimed by the plaintiff was for possession of the flat which is at gurgaon so by consent they cannot confer jurisdiction at some place which wherein the courts have no jurisdiction then comes section 17 which says suit for immovable property within jurisdiction of different courts suppose uh, a person wants to file a suit for uh, partition and if property is situated at place a then he will have to file the suit at place at the court having jurisdiction at point at place a but if properties are situated at various places suppose a b c d then he can file a partition suit for all the properties at any of the court having jurisdiction either at a b or c or d likewise will if one is goes for probate of will and will includes many properties which are situated in different states then the courts at different states will have the jurisdiction over the matter and he the plaintiff has to file only one case at any of at any court wherein he can file probate petition for all the properties which are involved in the will for which probate petition is required to be filed next is section 18 which is place of institution where local limits of jurisdiction uh, of the courts are uncertain in that case any court case can be filed before any court provided court should be satisfied that there is reason behind uncertainty why there is uncertainty it should be clear to the court and thereafter they can deal with the matter then comes section 19 Section nineteen is suits for compensation for wrong to persons or movables. Suppose A is residing at Delhi, and he publishes a defamatory newspaper at place B against C. In that case, C can file a suit where defendant is residing or where the wrong is done to the done to the done to him. then comes section 20 which is the suits which to be instituted where defendant resides or cause of action arises this is the most important section generally which applies uh, in most of the suits so there are three clauses clause a says that where defendant or any of the defendant resides and suit can be filed at any place where defendant or each of the defendant at the time of uh, commencement of suit residing at that place clause b says where an defendant or if more than one defendant any defendant resides then leave of the court will be required to bring all the other defendants to file the suit where one of the defendant is residing and c is where the cause of action wholly or in part arises a new moga transport company versus united india insurance company limited this is air 2004 supreme court 2154 it was observed that if the defendant desired to be protected from being dragged into litigation of some place he can save itself from such situation by an exclusion clause in this case the plaintiff united india insurance filed a case of subrogation against new moga transport company wherein some claim was paid by united india insurance to the uh, insurer when this subrogation claim was filed 
at uh, Punjab, the objection which was taken by new mobile transport company that Punj courts at Punjab has no jurisdiction. This was at Barnala. And the courts at Udaipur are having exclusive jurisdiction because the consignment note which they were sending was specifically mentioned in, on its face that exclusive, exclusive jurisdiction rests with courts at Udaipur. Therefore, only courts at Udaipur have the jurisdiction to try this matter. This plea was uh, taken by the uh, district court and the suit was dismissed. And this judgment was confirmed up till Supreme Court. Jurisdiction of court in particular place by consent can be given provided that courts are having jurisdiction over the subject matter. And it is not against public policy. If a court is having no jurisdiction, but by parties by consent or agreement confer jurisdiction to a place where no cause of action has arisen or courts have no jurisdiction, in that case, that consent by consent or by agreement, that jurisdiction cannot be given. Uh, one judgment is Hakim versus Gamon India Limited. This is AIR 9071 SC 740. Wherein it was held that parties cannot by agreement confer jurisdiction on court which it does not possess under the court. One more judgment is there Modi Entertainment Network versus WSS Cricket Private Limited. This is AIR 2003 SC 1177. Uh, the observation of Supreme Court was when there may be two or more, more competent court which can entertain a suit consequent upon a part of the cause of action having arisen therewith, if the parties to the contract agree to best jurisdiction in one such court to try the dispute which might arise between them, the agreement would be valid. So if uh, the two courts have jurisdiction over the subject matter, but parties decide that courts at only one court at place A will have the jurisdiction it, and they entered into, enter into that agreement, that agreement will be valid. But if they confer jurisdiction to a court which have no jurisdiction, and lacks inherent jurisdiction in that case, they cannot do that. And courts where, in fact, uh, the courts which have jurisdiction, only there the case can be filed. Third point is this cause of action. What is cause of action? So cause of action is a bundle of fact which plaintiff need to prove, if not by evidence, based on facts on which he has made out his case and he has to prove all those things and to support his right. The next is that cause of action wholly or in part arises. There is a judgment. This is uh, Messrs. Auto Movers versus Luminous Power Technologies Limited. Uh, this was decided by uh, uh, Justice Asha Manan on uh, uh, it, this is a recent judgment. Uh, uh, date of decision is 16 September 2021. So this is debtor must seek his creditor. If a suit is for recovery of money, this is uh, the common England law rule, which says that when no place of payment has been prescribed, in that case, it is on the creditor to file case as per his choice. If there is no express or implied bar, in that case, the plaintiff can file suit at a place where he has to receive the payment. In this case of auto movers 
versus luminous power technologies what happened is that the defendant was having its office at calcutta he placed order from calcutta to the plaintiff's office which was at calcutta the goods were delivered from calcutta to calcutta but the payments which defendants were was making is were at delhi he issued security checks at delhi office and before filing of case he was uh, making all the payments via rtgs at delhi to the plaintiff when security checks bounced the plaintiff filed criminal complaint under section 138 before delhi courts and thereafter he filed suit for recovery at delhi on the basis that payments were made at delhi this was challenged by the defendant on the ground that no cause of action has arisen at delhi but this doctrine that debtor must seek his creditor was followed as it is applicable in india also and it was held that the delhi court has the jurisdiction as payments were made at delhi and there was no restriction or no agreement that payment will be made at calcutta or somewhere else therefore delhi courts has jurisdiction then sec comes section 21 wherein it states that if anyone wants to object on the ground of jurisdiction this objection should be raised at the earliest possible opportunity before settlement of issues and it comes with a negative clause that no appellate court or divisionary court shall deal with the point of jurisdiction on this ground unless and until there is a failure of justice so this objection of jurisdiction whether pecuniary or territorial territorial or subjective should be raised at the earliest point and if it has not been raised at the earliest point then it cannot be raised at appellate or re, uh, revisional stage unless and until it is to be shown that there is some failure of justice if jurisdiction point is only a question of law then it can be dealt with uh, in the higher courts but if it is a mixed question of law and fact then it is required that objection should be taken at the earliest stage and it should be decided at trial so this was on the part of jurisdiction if anyone wants to ask any question they can anyone wanting to ask question regarding civil law what is subject vandana just spoken any doubt okay anyone want to introduce themselves they can introduce so we can know each other better there is a bhagyada bharti chahat you can also introduce yourself you are from chatisgarh hello ma'am uh, i am chahat gautam yes hello everyone hello i am just a student of law i am in third year Okay. I'm studying at Rajiv Gandhi National University of Law, Patiala, and this was a very informative session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody want to introduce? So this way we can know each other. Ma'am, I. Please, please go ahead. 
ma'am myself rashtrapal i am working as an assistant government leader in high court hyderabad ma'am very nice since four months i am uh, uh, practicing preparing for aor examination uh, with the help of your uh, ma'am thank you thank, thank you, you so much ma'am for all your the, support all the best thank you ma'am i think pooja is from pune right you can also speak yes ma'am ha bolo live bol do yes ma'am i am from pune uh, practicing in shivaji nagar district court ha to abhi logo ko pata to chale na fir bolte ho kaam nahi milta hai to hum apne aap ko introduce nahi karte hai hum log field mein nahi rehte hai मैम सिल्की वाचर फ्रॉम रोहिणी कोर्ट टेन ईयर एक्सपीरियंस इन रोहिणी कोर्ट वेरी नाइस अभी किसी को रोहिणी मैम वेरी नाइस और अभी किसी को रोहिणी कोर्ट में चाहिए तो ढूंढेगा कहाँ अगर हम लोग बोलेंगे सिविल विंग ऐसा एड्रेस बोलने से नहीं होगा यू शुड बी कंटिन्यूसली ना अब बोल दिया एक दो बार तो बाद में टाइम बचता है तो वी कैन यूज दिस नो यस मैम यू कैन ओपन योर कैमरा आल्सो सो दैट वन कैन सी यू आल्सो कैमरा ओके मैम सो अपने लिए यू वॉन्ट टू स्पीक प्लीज प्लीज गो है यू कैन ऑल्सो इंट्रोड्यूस हेलो भारती बोलना चाहते बोलो ना हेलो दिस इज भारती मल्होत्रा फ्रॉम अहमदाबाद प्रैक्टिसिंग इन गुजरात हाई कोर्ट वेरी नाइस और कौन है ऑलवेज लिस्टिंग टू योर वीडियोस नाइस सेशंस बाय वंदना जी एंड अनिका जी यू बोथ आप लोग अटेंड कर रहे हैं कि हम लोग कर पा रहे हो और कौन बोलना चाहता है गायकवाड़ जी कोई पढ़ने वाला नहीं औरंगाबाद से आप बात कीजिए मैम आई एम स्वप्निल शिंदे आई एम अ फाइनल ईयर स्टूडेंट ऑफ गोखले लॉ एजुकेशन सोसाइटी कॉलेज खारगर एंड थैंक्स फॉर मैम गिविंग द गुड गाइडेंस इन सिविल को सिविल प्रैक्टिस एंड मैम आई एम डन द 10 डेज इंटर्नशिप Uh, in uh, under advocate Anisha Rapna Supreme Court lawyer, and uh, they also supported to me as each and every time. And I am I am also uh, connected, and I am also uh, uh, more and more attend your lecture, ma'am. Any 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 more person? Anyone who wants to introduce? Good evening, ma'am. This is Ruchi Singh from Surat. Hi, Ruchi. So nice to hear. Ma'am, I'm. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, me and my daughter both are addicted of your videos, ma'am. Ah, आपके daughter को मैं बहुत miss करती हूँ. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thanks a lot. This ah, video. I would like to see you one day in Supreme Court, Ruchi. मेरे so advice आप वापस चली हुई सूरत. But I would like you to be there once back in the Supreme Court. Okay, like ma'am. Thanks a family. lot. Family. See, for a woman, a family and uh, this profession, दोनों balance करना है. कोई भी नहीं छूटना चाहिए वेरी नाइस ऑल बिकॉज़ ऑफ योर गाइडेंस मैम इट्स ऑल बिकॉज़ ऑफ योर गाइडेंस आपने सुना इतना मेरे बड़ी बात आई वांट टू शेयर हियर कि रुचि सुप्रीम कोर्ट आई थी लेकिन मैंने बोला अभी आप बहुत यंग हो थोड़ा मतलब फैमिली अच्छे से हैंडल करके फिर आप वापस आइए एंड शी लिसन टू मी मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा मतलब कि फैमिली और दोनों बैलेंस करना है आपको आई एम ब्लेस्ड दैट आई मेट यू मैम सीरियसली थैंक्स अ लॉट एंड रुचि प्लीज ना वो अच्छे से प्रैक्टिस करना अभी एकदम धड़ा थैंक यू मैम डेफिनेटली मैम थैंक्स अ लॉट और कौन इंट्रोड्यूस करना है किशन यू वांट टू स्पीक यू कैन अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ किशन इज फ्रॉम व्हिच प्लेस हेलो हाय आई एम फ्रॉम नागपुर मैम ओके नागपुर महाराष्ट्र प्रैक्टिसिंग सिंस 5 इयर्स एंड जॉइन लास्ट वन मंथ विद यू इन योर सेशन एंड लवली इंफॉर्मेशन and thank you for guiding us and helping out throughout your sessions and everything thank you ma'am thank you ma'am we will come we will keep in touch and surely we meet one day in bombay or some other state sure sure thank you ma'am 
थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू एवरी वन एनी वन नीड हेल्प फ्रॉम पुणे नागपुर आई विल ऑलवेज हेल्प एंड सपोर्ट यू एनी वन थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू मैम हेलो मैडम हेलो बॉम्बे हाईकोर्ट Okay. I have attended uh, your several lectures from since last uh, I think from one month onwards. Okay. Uh, your lecture uh, was very nice, ma'am. I have received certain received certain information which is valuable guidance on the topic of law. And uh, also today's lecture uh, is was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you, sir. Speak, sir. Got a got a very good hold on the civil laws. Um, just I am. Uh, We have uh, three more minutes. Three people can introduce. Snehal, you can also introduce yourself. Archana, she is also from Nagpur. Archana, Bhagyata Ubare. Ma'am. I am Bhagya Dawai. Uh, I am final year student in Yashwantrao Chauhan Law College, and I am from Shivga. Good to see you all the juniors attending so much. Hello, everyone. Hello, ma'am. Hello, Archana. Advocate Archana is in the office from Nagpaiko. अरे काम थोड़ा। I I also attend the matters of uh, all the courts like labour court, consumer court from Nagpur. Uh, previously I have practiced in Madhya court. That was my parental home. After marriage I have continued my practice here in Nagpur High Court. Very nice to know. Arjuna is a very hard worker. <laughs> we have one more minute two minutes in fact good evening everyone ma'am may i introduce sure sure please <laughs> in uh, uh, myself lakhan taraj mongse i am belonging from jalna district uh, and practicing since, since last year in district uh, jalna session and criminal courts Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable guidance. Vandana Chaudhary, you can introduce yourself. Vandana Chaudhary. Yes, yes, ma'am. Hello. Hello, I am Vandana Chaudhary. I stay in Kalyan, and I am uh, working with ma'am since six months. And I am really very glad to work with her. She is always motivating me, always helping me out. we are done for the today thank you so much good night everybody see you tomorrow bye good night thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you